reminding people that sin is a bad idea. It's a bad idea. That the pleasures of sin for a season are deceptive and very much lead to bondage. So, the pleasures of sin are overrated. In fact, there's a text in the scripture that says that he who rejoices in pleasure, and it's talking about now the pleasures of this world, is dead while he rejoices and is pleasurable. Remember that story of the man who walked into a funeral parlor and saw this marvelous, beautiful casket with, of course, the person who had died in the casket and saw all of these flowers and saw this elaborate setup and said to himself, now that's living. That's living. <laughs> he that is in pleasure is dead while he lives in that pleasure. And that's our temptation. If I could get this message across to every teenager today, because, you see, the problem with teenagers, and we've all been there, and by the way, it's not just teenagers, it's folks like us who were teenagers a long time ago. The problem is, it's easy to look at the world and think we have been gypped. To say to ourselves, if only we could cast off these restraints and do our own thing. There is a story about a kite. A legend that said that the kite thought to itself, you know, if I could just get rid of that string, the string is holding me down. I'd be able to fly higher. I'd be able to fly as high as the stars. But that string is restraining me. Well, one day the string snapped. And the kite was so happy because now it could go to the stars and kiss those stars. But it discovered a law of aerodynamics that the string that holds a kite down is the string that holds it up. And I want to say to you, as I say to myself, that if we want to fly high, if we want to be the ones who are going to rise to the stars, let us remember it is best, it is inevitably best that God be in control. God must be in control. Well, notice how far we've come. God has many pleasures. We are created to seek pleasure. Our temptation is to seek the lesser pleasures, the pleasures of sin. Spiritual maturity, now we're on number four. Spiritual maturity is to substitute the greater pleasures for the lesser ones. The greater pleasures for the lesser. Now take your Bibles and turn to the 16th Psalm. Psalm 16, where David talks to us about pleasure. Psalm 16, and there are dozens of passages to which we could turn, but I have chosen Psalm 16. You'll notice how uh, David is talking about uh, two different kinds of gods, two different kinds of pleasures, two different kinds of lifestyles. This is such a beautiful psalm that I shall begin at verse 1. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. And that be said about us. Apart from God, we have nothing that is good. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Now notice, the sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. The sorrows of those who choose pleasure. And when you think of that, don't think of just idols that you dance around. No, no, no. It says in Ezekiel, these people have created idols within their own hearts. You see, we are idolaters within because we have this hidden pleasure. Because we say to ourselves, I'm doing my own thing and self is on the throne of my life. That is idolatry. And those who follow those kinds of gods, their sorrow shall be multiplied. Have you ever wondered why some people are so miserable? God is just trying to get through to them. That's all. It's his way. Misery is a gift of God. It is his way of saying, why don't you give up the fight? Why don't you turn to me? Why is it that you continue to go headlong in the pursuits of pleasures that have that aftertaste, that, that darkness, that sense of emptiness? Why is it that you will not turn to me? The sorrows of those who go after other gods are multiplied. You know what happens during times of revival when God really begins to minister? The desire to be right with God... 
The desire to seek his pleasures is so overwhelming that people are finally willing to give up the lesser desires which they have held to their bosoms for years and years and years with self-justification and rationalization. Now notice, David said, as far as the false gods are concerned, he said, they are behind me, they have no part in me. So he looks back and he says, those gods are behind me. Around me I have nothing but blessings. Verse 5, Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. You know, when he talks about the boundary lines, he's talking about the actual land that was divided up, you remember, when the tribes came. But, of course, we can apply it. The boundaries have fallen onto me in pleasant places. God has just blessed us. Dr. Erwin Lutzer with part two of The Lie That We Must Choose Between God's Will and Our Happiness, the ninth of ten lies about God and why you might already be deceived. Tomorrow, more unraveling in the pleasures of God. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church to help you find God's roadmap for your race of life. Ten Lies About God can be yours as a series on CD, cassette, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Take a moment to visit our website. You'll find us at runningtowin.org. Don't forget, this broadcast is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next edition of Running to Win.